Hey everyone, it's Ken and Data Monkey back again for another episode of Monkey Shorts. And in this week's episode, we're going to continue our journey of looking at cube functions, which are based on power pivot backed pivot tables. So let's jump into Excel here. And what I want to show you is that this time I have two pivot tables side by side. They're both hooked to one timeline. So if I go and filter them, you'll see they're both filtering together. And I'll just clear that right now. And what I want to do at this point is I want to take this pivot table here and convert it to formulas. But what's different between last week's and this week's is that I now have something in the filters field. I've got a filter to change to domestic and foreign products. Now, easy enough to start. We're going to go to pivot table, analyze, all app tools, convert to formulas. And what you'll notice is that you get this nice little button coming up saying, would you like to convert the report filters? So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go and say yes and convert. And this is going to give you the exact type of pivot table that we've had before where everything's been converted into a cube member or into a cube value the way that we've seen previously. But with this pivot table, I'm going to go and look at this a little differently. I'm going to go back to pivot table, analyze. We're going to go to all app tools, convert to formulas. But this time we're not going to report or convert the report filters. And what happens is, it leaves this little filter field right here. So we can actually go and change this now to look at foreign products and it will actually change the pivot table itself. Now, of course, the difference is here, if I wanted to change this, I'd probably have to go and actually overwrite this value in here in order to be able to make that work. So this is a little bit more dynamic. Of course, as we already know from other videos that we've got in this series, we can obviously go back and we can build this entire thing out, flattening things down, and adding data validation lists to it so that we can also easily make changes the way that we need. The big difference between this solution and the one on the side here, if you refresh your data model, this pivot table will automatically get populated with any new items, while the data validation list I have here has to be manually maintained. So that's the big difference between these things. But still, we've got the granularity here that we can move things around wherever the heck we want, which is pretty darn awesome. Thank you for watching this episode of Monkey Shorts. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to click on the SkillWave logo on the bottom left in order to subscribe to our channel. Or if you'd like to see more videos in the series, click on the playlist tile on the right. And if you'd like to get more comprehensive training, you should definitely check out our website at skillwave.training.